Hey y'all, so we're here back with uh, another airplane. This one uh, just came out fabulously in terms of uh, the way it flies. Everything came out nice and symmetrical, unlike my other Constant Cord flying wing. I ran out of uh, foam board, so I had to use uh, some cardboard for the flaps, but um, I hot wired the main wing. There's uh, two panels per side. Here's one panel, another panel on the same side for the other. And same thing for the other side. I'm not the best hot wire cutter as you can see uh, uh, I have some scoring going on there where I didn't uh, move the wire along at the, the right speed. This foam is a lot stiffer but more brittle than the uh, pink Owens Corning foam uh, and uh, it's uh, really light for its strength uh, and I got it from uh, an oven packaging and it worked out very nicely the wing loading is about six six point two five ounces per square foot the span is 80 inches one large mojo have the typical uh, drooping leading edge cuffs here so that the uh, outboard section of the wing stalls after the inboard section so that we don't have any violent wing dropping at or near stall. Uh, same thing on this side with the outboard uh, drooping leading edge cuff. The um, vertical stabilizers uh, are different colors but not because uh, I wanted them to be that way for orientation but rather because that's just the foam that I had. <laughs> and uh, let's just actuate. Let me just get the controller here. Let's actuate the controls so you can see what's going on here. So, this is the flaps, and they're adjustable to any level I want. Uh, and they don't act so much uh, uh, as uh, to slow down the airplane. Uh, they do slow down the airplane. That's not really why I wanted them, because the airplane lands very, very slow um, as it is. It's 11 miles per hour st stall speed. And... Um, the reason why I wanted them is to kind of adjust the trim in flight because they're pitch positive. So because they're inboard, uh, so the uh, the lift acting from adjusting the flaps is going to be forward of the of the quarter cord of the mean aerodynamic cord. The mean aerodynamic cord is around here somewhere, and they're going to be inboard of that. So the lift vector is going to uh, put put the nose up, uh, and that's exactly what happens when you when you actuate these guys in flight. You get a ballooning effect. The nose balloons upward until it settles down, uh, and then for landing, you can land it with flaps, uh, but you do need to actually carry a bit of power uh, if it starts to you know kind of sink. Uh, so actually, and you don't even need the, the flaps for the landing. Um, here's the elevons. They, they work just fine, but they're not full span like the other Elevons were on the other Constant Cord airplane. So the roll rate is kind of anemic. It loops great because these are outboard of the mean aer aerodynamic cord. So they're going to, you know, loop the guy just fine. Um, but the roll rate is a little bit anemic. But here's the main point. I didn't do this airplane for aerobatics. The reason I did this airplane, and I'm going to turn it over so you can get more detail while I talk, uh, is for um, its incredible uh, glide ratio. I mean, the wing on this guy is a MH60 is what I was aiming for, but I ended up getting an MH45 close closer to that. And when after the hot wiring was done, it was more more like an MH45. Here's the typical. Um, Bracing, which was you know always a challenge on these long wings, uh, I had to use a quarter-inch dowel for the spar along the uh, length of the wing uh, because I didn't have any more carbon fiber tube. But for the main at the CG spar, very near it, the CG spar, I used a um, carbon fiber tube out of another airplane. And here's the uh, servos and servo wires and control horns and all that stuff. Um, I'm very happy with the way this thing came out and I'm pretty sure this is about as good as I can get in terms of making things symmetrical and, and efficient 
I don't think I can get much better than this. So in terms of aiming, my next project is not going to be for efficiency. It's going to be for something else. I don't know what. Um, and uh, this was almost like a, an anti-climax because really nothing went wrong with it. I was, you know, other than the, the build uh, minor issues that happened, you know, I had to do some fixing up of where I screwed up with the hot wiring. Uh, and you can't really see it now because it's kind of covered up, but, you know, I have to put in a, for example, right here, I have to put in a little strip of cardboard. It's underneath the tape now. You can hardly see it. But anyway, that's because I, you know, gouged in with the hot wire when I didn't intend to and things like that. Uh, this cardboard for the flaps because I ran out of, uh, foam board, it worked out fairly well. I was actually surprised. I thought it would be, you know, not too good, but it was fine. Um, and, uh... These servos are secured again with 3M double-sided double uh, tape and uh, this uh, fuselage section. I did want something to protect the electronics in this case for when I'm you know, sliding it in on the dirt or whatever because I fly in a very, uh, as you can see from the video, rough area uh, and I didn't want the electronics to be trampled on or hurt. Um, you know, the typical mounting of the engine in the back is nothing, nothing really new there. <clears throat> oh, what is new here is that I added a nose section that's made out of sponges uh, so that it absorbs much of the impact and it's covered in tape. Uh, and this way, uh, you know, if, it, you, if I do uh, nose it in for whatever reason, it's unlikely to, to damage uh, anything, actually. So this is even better than my other uh, approaches that I use for shock absorption or impact absorption um, in, in other cases, as you've seen in some of the other videos. Okay, uh, you can see the flight video. Uh, I'll be uploading that or it may already be uploaded. All right, take care. Bye.